Please pray with me. Gracious God, thank you for our children. And thank you for the new life that we see in them and the possibility and hope. And we pray that we will connect that to the joy and new possibilities you give to us, us, all of us, on this Easter Sunday morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you paid attention to that gospel lesson. I know it's hard in these days to pay attention to reading because we're used to such quick, quick sound bites and quick images and, and we don't linger on anything much anymore. But in church, we linger and we have the words and hopefully a few of them at a time get in and stop us and make us pause like our gospel lesson today. Three ladies, such practical matters. Time had gone by. The Sabbath was over. It's now Saturday night. And three ladies go to buy some spices so they could anoint the body of their dead loved one. You, we can imagine them walking together to the market to make that purchase. You know that there'd be times of conversation, times of tears. There would also be some long silences and pauses as they walked because there were no words to really communicate what their loss meant to them. And there were no surprises. Everything as they expected. They arrived at the market to purchase what they needed. And in the Middle East, to this day, folks often bargain for the price that they will pay for goods. Did the ladies bargain for the price of the spices for Jesus? Were things that normal? Or did they decide ahead of time to pay whatever was asked of them? We don't know, but they got what they needed, and then they walked back home to where they were staying. And they'd walk back from a market so many times. Now we're with the ladies very early in the morning. And they're once again walking on their way to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus with the spices they had purchased. They'd been discussing another practical matter on their way. How will we move the stone that covers the entrance to the tomb? Do you think they decided that because Salome was the strongest of the three that she'd get behind the stone and, and push and the others be on the side and help as they could? Did they hope there'd be a gardener there to help them? Before they could finalize their plan, they looked up from their conversation and they saw that the stone was already moved. It was a large stone and even small stones covering a tomb would be hard to move. It was moved. The entrance was open. They could bend and go right in, and they did. What was a sad, but probably very practical day was changing. Shopping, a normal activity. Figuring out how to manage the tasks of the day, a typical endeavor for them. Finding the dead in the cemetery, the only option. Nothing else is possible. Death is common every day. But the unexpected was now in their line of sight. The practical was being overturned. First, as they enter the tomb, they see a young man dressed in a white robe, and he's sitting to their right. Why that's important, I'm not sure. But what a very practical and ordinary thing to notice. He's sitting on the right side, and, and of course they're scared. Was this an angel? He must have been. Because the first words out of his mouth were the angel words. Don't be afraid. That's what angels say. Everybody else today tells us to be afraid. Angels tell us, don't be afraid. Even in the face of death, angels tell us, don't be afraid. And then they tell us what to do. You're looking for Jesus, he tells them. What expected words from an unexpected source. This might seem like a regular day, 
except you're looking for Jesus who is crucified. He's been raised. He's not here. The angel points to one of the smaller openings where Jesus' body had been placed, and he invites them to look and see for themselves. We're not told if they do or not, but it's pretty easy to guess that they looked, they checked it out, and Jesus wasn't there. Then the angel tells them what to do. I bet it took a few minutes for them to, to, to shake the, the stun out of their minds and hearts, let some of the shock wear off before they could make sense of what the angel was saying. I wonder if he had to repeat it, because if I was there, the angel would have to repeat it. Go and tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. You'll see him there just as he told you. Now, the out of the ordinary, the extraordinary was beginning to connect back to the ordinary because it always has to. Jesus was alive, extraordinary. Where would he meet them? Well, he would meet them back home in Galilee, normal place. And did you catch the pointed message in the angel's words? Go and tell the disciples and Peter. Well, Peter was one of the disciples. Go and tell the disciples. No, not just go tell the disciples. Go tell the disciples and Peter. Make a special point of telling Peter. Let Peter know that the one he had denied is alive and he's going to see him. Let Peter know it's okay. It's okay. Failure is such a regular part of our lives, expected part of our lives. Do you think the resurrected Lord has a special place in his heart for those of us who fail? Is there a special place in his heart for those of us who have denied him? I think that's one of the most hopeful things about the good news. It's for us who fail. It's for those of us in need of forgiveness. Here we are on Easter Sunday morning, part of the three ladies' story. They're told what to do by the angel. Instead, as we read it, they exit the tomb and then run for their lives. They didn't say a word. And this is really where the Gospel of Mark, as we have it, ends. All the oldest manuscripts of the Gospel of Mark end where we end it today. They didn't say a word. The ladies are afraid and silent at this point. Most scholars believe that the ending of the Gospel has been lost at some point. You know, it's on a scroll. And somewhere along the line, the end of the scroll had been burned or torn. Who knows? The other Gospels tell us what happened after this, but we don't read it in Mark. With Mark's ending, we have to guess a bit. How long did the women wait? Did the men ask them how it went? Did they see a strange look on their faces? And at the same time, more than guessing about it, we get to wonder what we would do, or even what we're doing. We are part of the ending of Mark's gospel. We go about our daily routines. We shop, we do our tasks, we grieve. Even though we see and read about bad things happening, we also see the good and extraordinary things happening around us. Some even say we've seen miracles. Do these good and unexpected things terrify us and cause us to keep silent? People still need to hear the good news. If we don't point out the good things now and then, who will? The Peters of our world need to know that they can be forgiven. Do we let them know or do we let them stew? 
In response to Christ's resurrection, let us not be silent about the good and the extraordinary, the resurrection of Christ and the things it means for today. Yes, you might have to enter a tomb or two. The danger is to start believing that the old and the mundane are really all there is. We walk, we drive, we work, we live, often with our heads down, unaware of how God is at work today. Lift up your heads. The power of the resurrection is still at work in our world. The disciples need to know. The world needs to know. On this Easter Sunday morning, let us shed our terror and amazement and speak the good. We are the people of the resurrection. I was taken on my way out of the 8 o'clock service this morning doing what people normally do with the words and with the songs. We kind of let the message go like this and not pause and hear it. I want you to hear it. Christ is alive, no longer bound to distant years in Palestine. He comes to claim the here and now and conquer every place and time. Not throned above remotely high. Can you hear that? Not throned above remotely high, untouched, unmoved by human pains, but daily in the midst of life, our Savior with the Father reigns. In the midst of us. In every insult, rift, and war, where color, scorn, or wealth divide, he suffers still, yet loves the more and lives though ever crucified. Christ is alive. His spirit burns through this and every future age till all creation lives and learns his joy, his justice, love, and praise. Amen.